Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cocktails and Rocktails with me, your most notorious groupie, Allison Rouse, author of this little guy right here. Not so little. These ones as well, where you can get that in my merchandise down in that description. So go down, fiddle about, and check it out, you guys. And as always, I like to be so much thankful, so thankful for everybody here and for the people that have been supporting this channel and merchandise and just visiting and just everything you're doing, the suggestions, the new people, and really kind of becoming a part of the family and opening your mind to a whole different side of something that's not almost famous about groupies. So thank you guys, everybody, sincerely, deeply, as always. And as always, you guys, I am listen. you know I listen to you, and today's episode is another subscriber suggestion. So thank you so much for that today. S, I love you. You're awesome. You're one of my Metallica ladies. You're so badass. And thank you so much for su the suggestion because her question was, has social media changed the groupie life and rock and roll? So we're going to talk about that today because has it? Hmm. I think so. So, all right. And I'm just going to have this little chilada. It's just just the Budweiser, just the Budweiser Chilada, kind of in the mood for something rich, but something light and crispy all at the same time, so it's basically a Bloody Mary beer, so everybody, grab your cojones and chiladas, kick up your feet, and let's have a little cocktails and rocktails. Cheers, big ears. Mm. That's so good, because it always reminds me of my dad, because my dad always put tomato juice in his beer, not always, but sometimes, and he would put peanuts in it, so it reminds me of my dad. Okay, so let's get into today's topic. Has social media changed rock and roll, the groupie lifestyle backstage? Absolutely, it has. And for several reasons, not just because, you know, social media in general has, I think, made people disconnect humanly, socially, um, emotionally, you know, because we're so easy to glom onto or to let go of or to sound off behind a keyboard when we're not ha having a physical lunch or going out on a date or living with someone or whatever you're interested in, I think it's easier for people to get used, to get lied to, to get scammed. And one of the ways we all have got scammed, how many of us here, ladies, down in the comment, how many of us here have gotten that email, especially especially on Instagram. Hello, love. It's me. Dot, dot, dot. We can put so many Dave Mustaines, um, James Hetfields, Steve Jones of the Sex Pistols, David Lee Ross. We've all had someone pretending to be a rock star. And, you know, some people who don't know, know better kind of get caught up in the moment and really do believe this. And it creates a downfall. Like, who is that Metallica girl with blonde hair? that said she had this online relationship with James Hetfield for years. She's on Twitter. Some of you guys have sent me her um, link and stuff. And, well, I'm, I know it was him. I know. Well, how do you know it was him? Did you talk to him on the phone? So, I mean, I think in that creates, because like I said, and some people, and I'm not dissing people who believe on that, I this girl kind of dragged it out on Twitter and, kind of made a spectacle of it when I don't think it really happened because like I said we've all been approached by one of our favorite rock stars quote unquote let me think mine's been James Hetfield Nikki Six um Lars Ulrich several times Elton John <laughs> it's like hey scammers you might want to check out my page first <laughs> but then there are people that have hope that really do want to believe that really and it, to me, that's so just, dis, that's just wrong to disrespect someone to not just the person you're emailing, but the person you're pretending to be. You're taking advantage and you're making, playing some with someone's emotions. And social media makes it so much easier to do that these days. And I just think it's wrong. So when in doubt, block them out. That's all you can do. Because I don't know who's sitting on the end of that getting off thinking it's a lot of fun to pretend to be someone. If you need that attention that bad, close the laptop, go out to the bar, go to the library, go to a restaurant, 
make friends. Invite someone you know on social media to, I don't know, have a human connection to see if you actually have that. Because a connection can be so fake, whether it is with a fake person or if someone's just using you for what they need from you, which a lot of times we know is a little self, um, multiple people self-love. And speaking of multiple people self-love, let's not forget about a while ago what happened with Dave Ellison, or as I call him, Junior. That's how I know him, so I'll always refer to Dave Ellison, the bass player, Megadeth, as Junior. Because that's what his nickname was back in the day. So with Junior, met that girl online. She went and got, met him at the hotel. I don't know if they hooked up, because I talked to this girl. And I'm going to tell you right here, right now, this was the plan from the start. So Dave Ellison meets her. I think she was from like Germany or somewhere like that. That's been a while. I'd have to dig through my Instagram messages. Um, but they hook up and they keep in contact. And keep in mind, Dave's an ordained minister. He's been married to Jules for a thousand years. Jules is someone that I used to know before. She was a groupie as well. But anyway, so um, if Jules is the person I'm thinking of. So... Anyway, so he's going behind his wife's back and they're having a little online playtime. And, you know, I think it's kind of funny because when you see this video, it's just a day. Normally, you would see the little box up in the corner of your face of this, that, whatever. Her face would definitely be a part of that, right? But no. Her face was, there was no box, there was nothing. It was just Dave. So this alone tells me she cornered him into doing that, you know, making him feel comfortable because we all have the sassy, sassy talk, whatever. So he's caught with his pants down and having playtime on his own. And what does she do? Oh, that's right. That's right. She posted it. It got leaked to the world. We all heard about this. And she somehow contacted me because I think I made a comment on it on one of her posts. And so she privately emailed me. I'm like, I've known Junior for, I knew Junior for a long time. And I'm not going to, and whoever did this to him, I think that's low and disgusting. And the way she was talking, I could figure it out really quick. She's like, well, my friend got into my phone and this and this and that. So oh, really, when did your friend get into your phone? And, you know, if I was you. How come you're not giving anybody the information so that Junior can be protected and, you know, you can protect your friend from this type of hideousness? Because this kind of set off, I mean, it was already there for the rock star paranoia to be exposed like that when having playtime online. So it's, it was already scary enough. You know, that was already something in the back of people's heads because we've already seen the, you know, S tapes from... Several rock stars over the years, you know, that's how the Kartrashians became fam famous because somebody's mom thought it was a great idea to exploit the S-tape. I've got an S-tape, but you've never seen it. And you won't. So, he did download it. And I talk about it. It's with Steve Jones and the Sex Pistols. But in this day and age, you know, the internet was not a big thing back then. And it was just Steve and I, and he kept the video. I didn't even ask for a copy. I did, but I just never bothered you know, with it, because he kept it for a long time. I don't know if he still has it, but he kept it for a lot, a lot of years, even di transferred it to disc. You're not going to see it to this day, but this girl with Junior with Dave Ellis, uh-oh, spill. Okay, all better, sorry. Adjusting, but with, had to clean up the spill. But so with Dave Ellison, this was exposed, it hurt his marriage, it hurt his reputation, he got thrown out of Megadeth, but in all fairness, there was already tension in Megadeth, you know, so this was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. And she, in my conversations with her, this was absolutely 100% intentional. So, you know, it scared the cojones off a lot of musicians. It broke their trust, just like those fake accounts could break a fan's trust or a hopeful groupie's trust. So, 
that's one of the ways because like you said it puts a fear into people because it's so easy to post it's so easy to press record on your phone and you don't know what that person is doing back in my day like i said with the pistol with steve jones and that sex tape what was he gonna do show it to his friends a few might go oh yeah i know her that was my only thing about it <laughs> so that was no big deal to me but i knew steve i trusted steve i knew him for four and a half years before i let him do that so there was already an established trust and that's what i mean by in my day we would just go to the hotel bar. And this is why I suggest this now, ladies. Stay off the internet. Don't go into rabbit holes about your favorite rocker, or your favorite band. Just get off, go to the hotel bar, and create an organic connection. See if you can trust that person, if that per person can trust you. Because being a groupie out on the road with the guy, you're having to trust your lives in each other's hands. The roof over your head, your transportation home. You're not just going around the block where you can call a cab. You know, so there was always established trust. And that disconnect with the internet really takes that away. And especially with that Dave Ellison thing. You just never know what somebody's true motivations are. And, you know, I think she wanted to be adored and liked and victimized and, you know, just all this stuff that she put herself in that position. It wasn't her friend that released that. It was the girl that Junior trusted. We call those star fuckers. That's not a groupie. That's a star fucker. And I even told her that. I called her out on every single one of her excuses. Because I'm like, no, nah, I'm not buying that. I've been around rock and roll too long. I've been through my own scandal. And speaking of those, you know, another thing that ruins it for groupies is the keyboard warriors who are less than stellarly kind to us, who degrade who have their opinions without hearing anything or without researching and end up slandering, like on TikTok. I mean, I'm going to have to sue this other guy on TikTok because he refuses to take down intentional known slander. He's known this as slander. TikTok said, well, it's not a violation. The fuck it's not. It is a violation. I'm down there in the comments with other people going, no, you're, she was never the, because you know, I, what happens when it, Ends up with John Entwistle. Oh, he was with the prostitute or hooker, blah, 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 blah. I never have been. You know, so I have to respond. And like I always say, with these type of channels, these aren't people who do research. These are not people who were there. These are people that have probably barely been to any concerts. They're just sitting as a keyboard warrior hoping for attention, likes, clicks, and money. It's soulless, it's egotistical, it's slanderous and wrong, and dude, you hope you can afford 2000 an hour. My lawyers used to be 1500 an hour, but you know, times, they are changing, so they are now 2000 And I told them that 2000 you do you, boo, but I will ask for damages. So for this, I think for several reasons, it's changed things for groupies, because, you know, people are so used to these lies, just this babble that really isn't anything but the truth. So in a way, social media is changing the truth of rock and roll history because people are just, they don't care. They have no scruples. They have no morals. They have no soul. So that's another huge way because then you can't trust the rock stars. And the rock stars are having, you know, their lives exposed even more. And it does scare them, not just about the groupies, but about deranged fans you know they can easily have their lives in danger because people you know i have had that issue with someone who keeps making fake accounts fake accounts fake accounts they follow every comment i make on tiktok every comment i make here and there where they can see me because tiktok is the only place i'm public and that's another thing we can put our privacy as a huge thing so the rockers either they're not online or they're on privacy, they're on private. That's actually for the, only their friends, you know? So I think it's invaded us. Like we were always so afraid of big brother, big brother growing up in my generation, how there was just gonna be cameras everywhere watching you. Well, what happened first? Social media. And then we got used to everybody invading our privacy because someone had said, 
you know, that queenie, whatever, she had said, don't you, you should, you put yourself out there. You should be able to take the good with the bad. Well, so should you, sweetie, because we all put ourselves out there. And we're all vulnerable to ignorance and bigotry like that. Because there is bigotry. That will get into another thing. So, um, I just think it's easier for people to hide behind keyboard warrior keyboards, make fake accounts, be abusive to the groupies, and be a terrorizing factor to the rock stars' lives. Not just, you know, like I said, what happened with Dave Ellis Ellison, with people kind of always bringing... They're more concerned about the social media and proving I was there, I was there, I was there. You know, it's more about the ego and the satisfaction that you can bring that ego. You know, and like I said, it such a disconnect to human beings in general, even at concerts. People are so disconnected. During their favorite song, they've got their cameras up, doing pictures, you know, screaming. They don't care about the people around them. In my time, we didn't do all that. We held our lighters up during certain songs and we passed joints. And we talked to people. We saw good-looking other people or people we might have passed, you know, in another time. Or we just happened to find a guy who's, you know, it was all about connecting on a human level. And... I just think, and people are very, very particular about who they slander and who they don't slander. You know, we talk about baby groupies. I'm on TikTok. There's a lot of people talking about Lori Maddox and all this stuff and having their opinions about that without really knowing their side of the story. But then there's people who glorify, like Carrie from, that was Eric Carr's girlfriend, and Ben and Playboy and stuff. She was 17 when she met Eric, and she's admitted it. She's like, oh, I don't know what I was doing at the hotel bar at 17. <laughs> we do, honey. You were looking for the band. You are playing the groupie game. You are playing the band game. You were a groupie. So we all, we all go to the hotel bar looking for the band. But because she was the quote-unquote girlfriend, oh, it's okay. Just like I say with Jerry Lee Lewis and Elvis Presley, one standard for Jerry Lee, one standard for Elvis Presley. And I think people have, that has become so much an easier factor to judge people with so little reality research information. So I think it's not just change rock and roll, but it's changed society in general and how we interact with each other. You know, the big thing that's really changed rock and roll is that the music business took over. The rock stars used to be in control of the record label and what they did. And, you know, there was kind of a meeting in the middle. Now it's just all about the business, even backstage. This is why I encourage ladies, if you are old enough, over 18, 21, whatever, you get to that hotel bar, get off the internet, Put out the costumes. Stop with the lives with your play and your of your loudness and your TikTok. And you're creating a fantasy or an aura or a facade. Go ahead and live the facade that you're creating. If you're truly passionate about it and you really want to be that, then go be it. Get offline. People know, have you guys have noticed, I'm not on social media much anymore. For good reason. Because I've been terrorized. I've had my life threatened. There's too many people behind keyboard warrior, being keyboard warriors, smug that are allowed to get away with the slander and gossip. And, you know, I'm just, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I want to connect with my people. You know, all the wonderful people that I talk to on social media, like Desiree, and I talk to them off social media. That's, that's the kind of people, that's how I connect. You know, and I think social media, it's not only brought a certain fear to rockers' lives because of what happened with Dave Ellison. Of course, wives, girlfriends in the UK, the footballers' girlfriends called the wags once upon a time. But the wags, you know, they can find out because lots of people want to post. And, you know, you I get people asking about NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, Apparently that does happen with some bigger stars. That never happened in our day because, again, you are actually meeting human beings. And there's a trust that is gained while you are together. Because, like I said, for to tour with the rock star, it's just like 
you, you, your whole life, the roof over your head, the food you're eating, your transportation, the company you're keeping, that's the rock star's world. And he's trusting you with his intimacy. And not, I'm not talking about what's going on in bed. I'm talking about his real private persona. You know, so there's a lot of trust that you can't get just hooking up on the internet. You know? And I think the guys in, at least Till Lindemann and the guys in Rammstein learned real quick. Don't have some woman going around you know, collecting women for you to choose from online to meet at the, to put in the front row of the shows. So I think, you know, that has kind of, because I think the way it's approached is very misconstrued as online because you can't hear the energy. You cannot hear the tone of voice. You cannot feel the person out. You cannot feel their energy, which can sometimes tell you their intentions. So... Like I said, the whole thing with the Rammstein thing, where they had some women pr procuring girls to put in the front row so that Till or whoever could have a little halftime show under the stage, a la Def Leppard 1980s. That shit don't fly now. Too many people are making too many judgments and shaming too many people for enjoying sex, for hooking up. If you guys had met on Grinder or Tinder, nobody would think twice about it. But you meet the rock star on social media, people are talking shit. So I think it has absolutely changed. Not just the way we connect, but the way people abuse, slander, attack groupies and rock stars. You know, people are like, yeah, but you have a book and all this. Yeah, I do, because I was already dragged through the press, called things that I never was, that I've proven legally several times that I wasn't, and my voice, I'm trying to make it heard. And it's very, very hard when you have people that print lies, that post lies, that get away with it, because people are going to believe it. And then you're going to, like I said, I had one person just on TikTok today following every, that follows every comment I make on different posts around TikTok because that can be done. So that makes me, and you're not going to win. You're not kicking me off social media. I'm not going to stop having my voice heard because you have to be a silent, hateful, bored, low life keyboard warrior terrorizing. I don't get that. I don't get why people do that. And that terror has come across only because social media, it makes it easier to degrade, to lie, to get busted, to make things seem very seedy and questionable. It makes us all vulnerable to that kind of ignorance. If we could turn it back around to connecting with people like it was in the MySpace days, then that would be cool. I've met a couple really good friends in the MySpace days, you know, Mark and uh, Andy and a few other people that I am still friends with to this day, 15 years. We've had great online friendships. If we could get back to that, I think things would be a little different, would be a little better. Or if we could actually, like I said, the girls on TikTok, Instagram, dressing like the 80s ladies, wanting to, you know, be part of the rock world. You're not being part of the rock world. Social media has made fake ass people, fake ass lives the precedence, the reality, when it's nowhere near. So it's changed our world's all, world altogether, and not necessarily for the better. Like, I am so lucky that I get to meet so many wonderful people through this channel. And I love it. We come from different beliefs, different walks of life, different heritage, just different everythings, and we connect here. We drop everything from the outside life, and it's all about rock and roll, women empowerment, you know, that that's not, that doesn't go on 99% of the time on social media. So I'm very, very lucky that I attract that kind of human being. But there is still that 1% that crawls through with the hate, with the lies, with the shade, throwing shade and twisting things around because you don't really know how to interact with actual human beings. And then when 
when women who go into rabbit holes about their favorite rock star do get to meet him in person, it's a disaster because they've built up this facade in the head and how it's supposed to go. And it just doesn't, real life doesn't happen most of the time like we want it to in our heads. God, if it did, we would all be sitting pretty in some somewhere else right now. No, I still love coming here and talking to you guys and meeting new people and hearing different stories. I still love that about this. So let's all try to get back, you know, let's, let's just kind of stop berating each other because of what you're bored because you want likes and clicks. So you're going to go with the lies and you're going to ignore on intentionally. As, and, you know, when you ignore somebody saying, hey, you just put yourself into a legal, pre precariously legal situation, and you're just ignoring him, ignoring him, but you're leaving the comments up thinking you're badass, it's only going to be, you're only a detriment to yourself. It's only going to bite you in the ass. It doesn't make you badass. It makes you a dumbass. And it, all it does is show what kind of person you are. You're not a decent human being. If you're just doing that, and a lot of decent human beings have kind of ruined the internet for everybody. It's kind of social has ruined social media and general life for everybody because it just trickles down in a negative way. So let's get it back to connecting with people and finding our commonalities and having fun with each other because that's what this was meant to be meeting people from different parts of the world different parts of life different walks of life so we can learn from each other not isolate from each other because of it the social social media myspace this was meant for people to connect and understand each other more not disconnect more so Let's pretend like we're at a fucking Metallica concert in the 80s, like we were at any concert in the 80s, whether it be Grandmaster Flash or LL Cool J or Metallica or Megadeth or whatever boy band or whoever was, you know, whatever concert you were at. I think of the last concert where you just had so much fun because sometimes people do connect at concerts that you meet on the internet. I see that all the time. You're on a fan page. You're like, yeah, I'm going to be at the show. Let's meet up. Let's grab a beer. Do that. Let's do that more. Let's use social media for what it was meant to broaden our horizons, not restrict into hate. So, all right, you guys, and thank you again for this subject matter, because like I said, I think it is a big deal and it has completely changed, but it does not mean that the groupies need to change. They need to overcome the social media and get out and really be connecting in human. When I say get your ass to the hotel bar, that's what I mean, ladies. Get your ass to the hotel bar. Have a good time. Get on the bus. Get on the plane. Go broaden your horizons. Some of, It makes even some of the ugliest people into the nicest people. So, All right, and thank you again for listening to my babble. Put your... I want everybody to talk to me down in the comments. Put your experience with a fake rock star account with, you know, a real rock star. And how it went when you actually met him in person, if you met them online. I want to hear that because I'd like to hear more positive stories. Because all I ever have to deal with is the negative outside of, you know, the people that I've met through this channel and my book. I've loved the positive energy that that has brought. And I'm so humbly thankful that that's what the universe has brought to me through my book. So, yeah, ladies, get out. Let's live life. Let's meet up. Let's have a good time. And let's stop making fake account after fake account after fake account just to terrorize someone. Because when we all put ourselves out there in social media, we're all subject to opinion. So don't just lay it on me. But all right. Well, again, I've said this five times already. But thank you, everybody, who got to the end of the episode with me. Like I said, put your stories, your comments, your thoughts, your ideas down in that description. Put your or comments. Put your questions down there. Because, you know, I will 100% answer all of them that I see. So thank you again to everybody who made it the whole social media or the whole, the whole episode. Totally appreciate you so much. And for those of you that are just sort of 
hanging out down there in the nosebleeds, just, you know, not if you want to subscribe yet or become a member, do it. Press the subscribe, become a member, hit the bells, and have a good time with all of us here at the Family Cocktails and Rocktails. And we'll see you next time. Cheers, big ears.